Rice gum is the perfect example of how broken promises, scummy behavior, and clout chasing can kill a channel. Considering that it's been over two years since Rice Gum's last upload, it's more than safe to say that his channel is dead. But how did he fall off so hard? And what on earth is he doing these days? In this video, we'll be uncovering the truth behind his disappearance. Rice Gum's rise to fame started in 2015. With humble beginnings in the React personality niche, he seemed like a pretty relatable and reasonable dude who would spend his free time reacting to videos in his bedroom. On the 21st of October, Rice would go on to post his first viral video, with a video titled, Are These Kissing Pranks Fake? A video that would go on to gain over 2 million views by answering the question that everyone had on their minds at the time. Rock, paper, scissors. Bam, she put scissors, just fucking put paper. You know what? No, I wouldn't forget the game. <laughs> what? <laughs> he lost. Bro, he didn't even win. And look. What? This is her parents or her grandparents or whatever. And with comments such as, to be honest, I would love to be his friend. He seems really chill. It was evident that Ricegum's friendly and humorous personality was keeping his viewers engaged with the content. Ricegum would write off the success of the kissing prank video up until the 9th of December, when he would post the video that would change everything. You know how creators seem to have a downward spiral these days? Well, there's also such things as an upward spiral. And the video titled These Kids Must Be Stopped would mark the beginning of it. Yo, what is up guys? Your boy Rice going back for another video. And before I want to start what I want to talk about, about this video. I just want to say, my last video got 900 comments and I was reading through all of them. Once again, I read all comments and a lot of the comments were just like, Rice Gum, do more, man, keep going, these are funny. And you know, just all these positive comments. I just want to say thank you because um, it's 2 a.m. right now and I'm up recording because um, basically you guys are just pushing me. Ricegum seemed to be very grateful for the audience he was amassing, and was also working very hard to keep them entertained with regular content. And within just a couple of weeks, Ricegum would reach the total of 50,000 subscribers. Yo, what is up guys? Your boy Ricegum back for another video, and today is crazy. We hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Whole... No, I'm just kidding. But guys, thank you. I don't want to sound fake and overreact and stuff like that, you know. Um, every video I always thank you guys. I just want you guys to know that I am thankful for you guys and stuff like that It's not that big of a deal. 50k is pretty solid though. You guys can go tell all your friends I knew rice gum before he was famous Videos titled X Must Be Stopped would quickly become a viral staple on the channel, leading him to the rapid growth all the way up to 1 million subscribers. Throughout his call-out videos, Ricegum would begin implementing diss tracks at the end. Short skits that him and his imaginary character Afrogum would create in order to roast his targets. Drop the hottest diss track of 2016. It's time. Looking, looking. Looking, looking. Rice gum, yeah. Rice gum, yeah. Rice gum, yeah. If you don't know the story, yeah, I'm here to tell ya. Yeah. Okay. Taylor tried to shut my YouTube down, he was jealous. Boy, Whoa. you need to keep a shirt on, got nothing to flex. How long does it take for food to travel down your neck? Went from vines to trying to rap, you should probably go back. Stop Not it. a Lambo, you could have paid your songs to not be trash. Oh my god. Looking for your talent, couldn't find. Ricegum would ultimately get so well known for his witty diss tracks that creators would actually start fearing and making one of them. And things were going pretty well, until Rice found himself getting indirectly called out in a tweet from popular Viner, Gabby Hanna. It says, if your entire channel is built on the name of other popular users for clickbait and research engine results, I don't respect your channel. And you know, at this point, I'm like, who could she possibly be talking about? I mean, it doesn't ring a bell. I don't know who she's talking about. So then I DM her saying, hey man, just at me next time. I'm pretty sure that tweet was about me. Just at me next time. And she said, then honestly, that's your own insecurity about it. Never assume what someone means. My tweets have never been and never will be directed at a single person. You may very well fall into this category, but that tweet wasn't with you in particular in mind, right? And what she's trying to say is, you know, Rice Gum, your channel may fall in the category as I don't respect you, but that tweet wasn't about you. Damn it, guys, it's pretty clear that the Gabby Show doesn't respect the channel, man. I mean, she just can't respect our channel, man. Like, what am I gonna do? But since she wants to judge our whole entire- So what did Rice Gum do to gain the respect from Gabby? Well, he made a diss track on her. Something.
You had the sub tweet, try to keep it on the low. Like if the fans didn't add me, I wouldn't know. I pass you in subs cause you're struggling to grow. I don't think there's anything bigger than your nose. How to get so big, can you please tell us? No so long, big bird is jealous. Even Pinocchio said it's up, sir. Wait, is it Gabby or the Fruit Loop bird? After this, all I heard Walmart is employing. Ears start bleeding cause your voice is so annoying. I don't really get why you talk so loud. Even Meek Mill said to keep it down. Don't think I forgot you got exposed For being unoriginal and stealing jokes So after all that tells us something You're not entertaining and you're not funny Put some respect, stop playing with my name You talk about click, but even though you do the same Your vines and your videos are fucking trash Next time have the buzz between me with an ad Against all odds, it wouldn't be long before Rice and Gabby would actually cross paths. As Gabby confronted Rice at a YouTube party Where she would claim that Rice beat her and smashed her phone With word getting around that Rice was an alleged woman beater, he would defend his innocence in a video titled The Gabby Show Lied About Being Abused. Her down, he's scratching her. Also, immediately after the incident, she took a picture of her leg and there was a bruise and everyone thought I gave her that bruise. Like, clearly everyone is assuming that bruise is because of me. But we later find out that she had those bruises before the incident, so there's no way possible for me to give it to her if she already had the bruises. So we caught her in a lie and now she's over here switching up her story again. She's saying that she took a Snapchat trying to show off a scratch on her leg not the bruises I'm trying to show off the scratches on my leg and she draws an arrow in the Twitter how come you didn't draw the arrow in the snapchat it would have took 10 seconds it would have cleared up so much confusion and then I rewatch it and there was literally no like how can bruises from a while ago look more severe than a fresh scratch this is so obvious that she's doing this for attention because I remember when I smashed her phone I just left and on my way home I was in the uber she was already on snapchat ranting showing bruises crying it didn't even take 20 minutes after the incident she's already making it public that next morning she posts a 15 minute video crying showing Fixed. Rice Gum even finished off the video with a diss track where he would go deep in with insulting her. Phone in my face, now her screen cracked. Bitch really tried to make a move. She playing games like 2K, but I spent that on my sweater too. Wrist looking like the 50 bands from that last disc that I did on you. Now they mad, I make a better moves. Now they can't afford to be up in my shoes. Jordan 12 and they OVOs. Big nose try to lie on me like Pinocchio. All of these fake accusations got me tied up like it's O and O. Now I'm mad and I need a dad cause the diss tracks I was laying low. Had to come back like a season pass, should be doing more like a season low. Made it seem like like I beat a ass, I ain't lay a finger on that bitch at all. I just called my lawyer up and he told me he go get us off. I thought she was high up, but the thing she doing is really low. This thought made a lie up, so fuck her and her shitty show. Even though Rice could have been considered wrong in the situation, his sheer popularity would allow him to get away with it, making it almost like he was untouchable. 
Now, this is where the cracks in Ricegum's facade began to show. As Rice began letting the clout get to his head, transforming him from the level-headed humble creator, all the way into the braggadocious and arrogant personality we all know him for today. Around the time, a creator known as Idubs was popping off in the YouTube scene. With a video series called Content Cup, Idubs would call out and expose scummy behavior in the YouTube community. At the time, he had just uploaded the viral Content Cup on Leafy Is Here, a notorious commentary channel who was going viral at the time. And it almost seemed like Ricegum wanted a piece of the pie, practically making a video asking iDubs to make a content cop on him. Like, honestly, if you were to make one on me, what would he say? He would be like, oh, Rice gonna bully these people. I'm gonna show him a lesson. He'll roast my appearance, whatever. He'll probably bring up some old pictures of me from way back then when I looked weird. I still look weird. Maybe at the end, he might squeeze a diss track in there to show people that he can, you know, you know, give me a taste of my own medicine. Who knows? Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is I'm next, guys. I'm next on the hit list. And if I'm not next, then I'm probably next next. But guess what? I'm not leafy. You, you can't just hide, hide for months and make a 20 minute video and randomly, no one even knows and surprise everyone and just drop it on my head. You can't just do that because guess what? I'm ready, and if you do do that, bro, if you do drop a video on me, I swear to God, I'm dropping the best diss track ever, and that's on my... Even with Ricegomber's massive personality changed now that he had money, he would still pull in millions of views on each upload, which inevitably would add fuel to the fire, as his ego just grew and grew. It wouldn't be long before Rice was ultimately humbled after posting a video titled Why I Left the Content House, a video where he would travel to Hong Kong and be incredibly disrespectful towards the locals, even going as far as forcing an old man to eat an ice cream that was already half eaten. Can you eat this for my friend? Please, please, please. For you. Good. Eat it, eat it. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, we pulled the pizza. And hey, you know who Rice Gum is? Irrelevant. All right. And hey, you know who Rice Gum is? Irrelevant. Do you guys know who Rice Gum is? Irrelevant. No. And hey, you fuck with Rice Gum? And hey, you fuck with Rice Gum? Sorry, You fuck with Rice Gum? No. See, man, like, they don't even like me. They don't even know me. It's like, so stop calm and go back to China because, like, I don't even belong here. I belong in America, so stop saying that. It, it pisses me off. Like I said, I'm about to try it. Five out of ten. Oh, you guys have uh, thoughts here? Thoughts? Thoughts? I don't understand. It wouldn't be long before the video would get reported enough times they'd be removed for violating YouTube's harassment guidelines. Ricegum would post a video trying to justify his actions. A comment from viewer Gianfranco summarized the reception of the video quite well. This guy's moral compass is so broken, how he justifies his actions boggles my mind. It would only be a matter of time before Ricegum's predictions would come true, as on the 4th of October 2017, iDubs would post a content cop on Rice, a video that would go on to gain over 52 million views and would mark the beginning of the end for Ricegum. Like, there were so many people in the video that I was like, who the fuck, like, who are these people? You are so stupid that you don't even realize that that question could be asked of you in a matter of years. I guess you should just hope that future relevant YouTubers aren't as mentally deficient as you. Idubs would end the video with a diss track that featured the appearance of PewDiePie as well as Ethan Klein. You're fucking delusional, so try your best to remember. You're not a pimp, you're a borderline sex offender. This boy a flavor of the month, but which is it, huh? A whiny Vietnamese wannabe gangsta is salt and vinegar. You're like Kanye, without the talent. Like Jackie Chan, but a little faggot. Like Soldier Boy, but actually, yeah, you're exactly like Soldier Boy. So you don't wanna look like a little bitch, but dude, you're gonna be crucified. How can you claim that shit when you're too scared to go in on beauty pie? Little hoe. Little bitch, suck my 5.3 inch dick. Admit that you just got pounded. I'd say take the L if you could pronounce it. Get it? Because you're Asian? That's what you wanted, right? Wascom would reply to the video with a diss track of his own, titled Frick the Police. But with his video having over 1.4 million dislikes, it was obviously the real winner was. A 30 minute vid, I'm who you're obsessed with. You look like your sister is the girl that you have sex with. Uh, yeah, do you get the message on Twitter thread rape? We should get this guy arrested. But I'm flexing, can you get these sheep out my mentions? How can I be mad, bitch? I sleep in a mansion. Try to hold me back, but I keep on advancing when I'm looking at his head. Ooh, that shit's so gigantic. I'm coming still, bitch, my pockets fill a hundred bills. I'm in the hills, bitch, my soldiers did a hundred mil. They're telling me to stop flexing, but I'm stunned still. I ran it up all of a sudden, bitches wanna. With Rice's reputation in the rapid decline, a video was posted on the 1st of January 2019 that would act as a straw that broke the camel's back. The video was titled How I Got AirPods for $4 and was a sponsored video of Ricegum promoting a loot box style website. 
but the ad itself was incredibly deceptive and encouraged the viewers to use the site for profit when in reality, the site was closer to a scam than a legitimate fair game. Yo, alright, listen, listen. These shoes are like a thousand dollars, right? I can sell it back for five hundred, so like it's a profit, but like I already have these shoes. Hold on. Like guys, look, I already have the pair, so like I can't be too excited because I already have it, but I can sell it back. So like, there's an option to sell it back to get the money. So like there's no losing in this. Cause even if you get an item that you don't like, you just sell it back. Here we go. Hey guys, so I sold it back for like a thousand, which is so weird because I bought a hundred dollar box, but I got a thousand dollar shoe out of it. So I got some profit. AirPods, yo, I be still having the cords. Like, I don't even have these yet. I spent four dollars for this, yo. I just finessed the website. Four dollar AirPods. I'm not even gonna sell it back. I'm gonna ship this to my house right now. So you guys can see my balance right here. I started with like half of this, and then I just kept opening stuff, got some cool stuff, and then I like sold back. So I made back some of the money. I'm up right now though. So like, I've been having good luck on this site. I'm gonna ship this to my house though. AirPods, here we come. All right, guys. I feel like I opened up everything I wanted to open. The video proved to his audience how ready he was to sell it to scammy sites in order to make a quick buck, which was shocking in contrast to his old humble personality where he thanked his viewers and respected his viewer base. When things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, they did, as H3H3 Productions would post a video calling out Rice for his dodgy sponsor. Make it look like he came up there. This has got to be one of the worst things I've seen on YouTube, simply because his fans are so young and so impressionable that I mean, there's a reason you need to be 21 years old to gamble because you need to know what you're doing. It's a dangerous, it's addicting, it's a very, it's a vice, right? It's a, it's a real vice. Many lives have been ruined due to gambling addiction. And so when you introduce something like this that is quite literally gambling to an eight to 12 year old, especially on YouTube, which is supposed to be a reputable site, Ryskin was ultimately forced into a corner and posted the video calling others out for doing the same thing and finally apologizing at the end. True, it's true. I'm an asshole. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I can't really do much because I already did it. The damage has been done. You guys already saw a money hungry side of me and it is what it is. And there's nothing I can really do but say sorry and give you these Amazon gift cards. So I'm sorry. It just wouldn't happen again. Amazon cost 10 to $20, just a little giveaway. It's, it's the least I can do after, you know, this, you know, um, okay. Have a good day, guys. I'm sorry again. I hope you guys can forgive me. Let's have a good year. Yeah, no? Okay. Um. All right. Well, anyway, I am wrong, and I'm super sorry. I am going to keep the $200,000. I do admit I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to be giving about $100 away right now. Um, but I will be keeping the $200,000, and hopefully... All your mom's credit cards don't get maxed out. You're gonna be doing chargebacks. Your mom might miss her rent. Um, I do really apologize for, for all the credit cards that were stolen and possible gambling addictions that were fostered in a 12 year old brain when all the neurons are firing and you're making that connection, you're getting really wired on. Although you would think that that would be the end of the drama, Rice got greedy and snapped back again with a second video titled, This YouTuber is Lying to You. A video where Rice would notoriously attack Ethan's pregnant wife, Hila. I'm not a therapist or anything, and this is like towards the end of the video, so a lot of people might not even see this, so I'm just gonna say how it is. I think this fool is depressed or whatever, because his girl be just so whack. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> someone has to say it, but like, every time his girl is in a video, bro, it's just crickets. This soul just go, just walk into the house and look through their shit and find guns. Monotone Monica over here. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't know her name, but like for real, she's just so boring, bro. And maybe you're just bored of her or just like surround with some high energy girls because like you probably can. I mean, you got the money in the clout, right? At the end of the day. Anyways, man, just be happy, man. Like quit roasting on me. Look, guys, I'm out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. With the video having 221,000 dislikes compared to only 109,000 likes, it was evident that the YouTube community didn't support Rice's attempt of pulling down Healer for clout. But if Rice's attitude towards women wasn't reflected badly enough already, a clip from one of Rice's old streams would take the place of one of the worst things you can possibly say to a human being. I told this dude no, I don't want it, and then like I was like drunk, and then yeah, and so that's why I don't really count that. But why he raped you? Yeah, I mean, but did you I sue him and shit or not? No, I didn't because like I he just has a lot of family members that are like that were like oh and I got bullied like in high school like I don't know. You got raped. Yeah, bro. And this and this dude, he raped like hella people. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, no, but did it feel good though? No, I didn't. Damn. It was like how long or like was it? How long? No, like in time of the 
Like how long like did the rape last before? <clears throat> like le- like five minutes or less. Oh, okay. So it's not that bad. Okay. Yeah, I mean it wasn't bad. It was, I was like drunk or whatever, but like I was just, like trying to tell him no and shit. Damn. So guys, if you want to rape her, she won't see you. So. Sure. <laughs> By now, it's entering 2020, and Ryskin was one of the most hated YouTubers on the platform. With all his videos getting a high amount of dislikes and negative feedback, he would slowly but surely lose motivation to continue posting. But when he did post, it seemed like the only thing he wanted to talk about was his ex-girlfriend and how luxurious the lifestyle was that he was living. This led up to the 13th of July 2020, when Ryskin would publish his final video on the channel. It's been two years since he last posted, and the feedback from his viewers really reflected on Rice's transformation and the negative effect are getting lost in the source can have on someone's career and personality. From here on out, Rice would leave the limelight, only returning to make a quick buck from a pump and dump NFT scam known as Save the Kids, a scam that was exposed by CoffeeZilla in 2021. Today, we've got yet another mm, juicy little scam coming from the influencer section of the internet. The biggest scumbag, greedy people on earth who are happy to sell you out for a few bucks. Let's take a look at um, who's going to be doing the scamming today, shall we? It, roll the video. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ryska. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a BEP20 token redistributing wealth to both holders and charities. Actually, it turns out to have just redistributed wealth to the people who got in on the ground floor, AKA these guys. After being exposed for promoting yet another scam, Rice would go awfully silent. And since then, not only have his viewers died down, but he has also lost over 600,000 subscribers. 